Jim, you're live. Thank you, Heather. Good evening. Welcome to the Town of Henrietta Planning Board uh, meeting scheduled for Tuesday, June 16th, 2020. Members present, Matt Borkowski, Patricia Brill, Craig Eckert, Stephen McIntyre, Lawrence Neal, and Rick Page. Town staff present are Chris Martin, town engineer, and Dan Mistrella, planning board attorney. First item on the agenda will be the minutes from the May 28th, 2020 meeting. Does the chair have a motion? Motion to approve. Thank you, Mrs. Brill. Sufficient second? Second. You're on mute, Craig. Thank you, Mr. Page. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The motion carries. And I wanna take this opportunity to, to welcome the public that's viewing uh, on either Facebook or, or YouTube uh, and, and let you know uh, that the there'll be a public hearing with the Henrietta Town Board uh, being held in regards to open space uh, on the uh, Forest View Subdivision Project on July 6, 2020 at 6 p.m. Uh, information will be mailed out to the residents in the next few days as to how to participate in that public hearing. Uh, Second item on the agenda tonight is application number PB324, Forest View Subdivision, for preliminary subdivision approval of a 47 lot residential subdivision with 90.6 acres of open space and a conservation easement area located off of Ward Hill Road in a rural residential zoned district. May I ask who's here representing the applicant this evening? Got to unmute. Applicants. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, sorry. Ryan Destro with BME Associates, and I'm also here with Peter Vars as well. Thank you. And Ron Hinkle also is the applicant. Thank you. Patty, do you need spellings at all? Um, if you could spell the your name um, with Peter Vars, apologize. Thank you. Ryan, R-Y-A-N, the last name is Destro, D-E-S-T-R-O. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So I will let the applicant go ahead and, and uh, make their presentation this evening, uh, and then we'll move to the board. Okay, so um, following the last planning board meeting where the public hearing was closed, um, a couple of Main concerns were received from both the residents as well as um, the board, uh, one being drainage, and um, we will review the drainage um, in a second here, and then the second being traffic. Uh, we understand that the town has contracted SRF Associates, a uh, traffic um, consultant, to conduct a traffic study on the town's behalf um, for further clarification um, for some of the concerns that were addressed. Um, since the last meeting, uh, we have received um, preliminary town comments from the town staff. We have revised our plans and the engineer's report and have resubmitted them. We've also um, addressed the um, town engineer and drainage consultant for the town, their comments uh, for drainage. Um, we've also provided um, enhanced drainage exhibits um, that provided further clarification from the two drainage exhibits that were provided in the engineer's report. <clears throat> um, they're color-coded and they show uh, the pre-development uh, drainage conditions as well as the post-development drainage conditions uh, showing that there's a reduction in drainage area um, to the Ward Hill Road um, to the northeastern, uh, northeastern corner of the project um, and then the remainder of the, um, the drainage is being conveyed to the on-site stormwater management facility where, where, where it will be detained and the peak flow rates will be reduced from under pre-existing conditions. And then, uh, as I said, uh, SRF um, has also prepared a traffic study and I believe there is a representative from SRF um, on the meeting tonight as well. Hi, my name is Amy Dake. I'm with SRF Associates. We were contracted by the town to perform a traffic study for this. Um, 
We looked at three intersections, uh, the intersections of East Henrietta and Ward Hill Road, Pinnacle and Ward Hill Road, as well as Ward Hill Road with Branch Brook Drive, which is directly opposite the proposed new roadway for the development. Um, it's a little difficult because of everything that's going on with COVID. Traffic's not really normal right now, so we couldn't collect traffic data. So we were able to obtain some historical data in terms of uh, turning movement counts at the, at the intersections, as well as some recent New York State DOT and Monroe County DOT traffic counts. And uh, through that, we were able to develop traffic counts representative of traffic today at those intersections. So we conducted our analysis. Um, if you have the report on page two, we do have a chart that shows the uh, evolution of traffic on the three roadways. Um, and those lines basically show that traffic was pretty steady between 1995 and 2017 on both Ward Hill Road and Pinnacle Road. You'll see uh, an increase in traffic on East Henrietta Road between 2002 and uh, 2005. And this was a result of construction on uh, nearby roadways that diverted traffic to that roadway for that time period. And then you'll see that the traffic volumes came back down to where they were previously. Uh, the trip generation for the site, um, there's 46 single family homes and we anticipate that uh, that would generate nine entering trips and 28 exiting trips during the morning peak hour commuter time period. And in the evening peak hour, we anticipate a trip generation of 30 entering trips and 18 exiting trips. And when we look at the capacity analysis for the intersections, we find that all of the intersections operate at uh, an above average level of service B or better. That's a quick synopsis of the traffic study. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer questions. Thank you, Amy. Does anybody have a question for, uh, for Amy? Well, Thank I you. guess I will. Um, the, what I, I understand because of the COVID-19 you are were limited is what you could do. Um, so the information basically came from 1995, is that correct? Yeah, we took the 1995 uh, full development traffic volumes for the Harvest Hill subdivision and then uh, projected those out to today's volumes. Okay. Um, you, you did what you were asked to do, I understand that, um, which is basically checking the intersections to see if anything needs to be done to mitigate them. And you did your job, I understand that. But looking back at the comments from the residents, I, I think maybe we gave you the wrong request. And that is um, the concern coming from the neighborhood as I was reading, was not really the volume of traffic, but more like the speed of the traffic and the hill and how that pertained to the residents concerned for somebody getting hit by a car. So you did what you were asked to do. I understand that. But from the residents perspective, I kind of think we missed what they really were looking for. And that's all I have to say about that. If anybody else wants to weigh into that, but if you look at the comments, uh, which were summarized on one of the uh, emails, um, there's an awful lot of concern about the speed, um, how they're approaching the hill, um, et cetera. And that's what I had to say about that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Neal. Uh, any other questions for, uh, for Amy? Thank you. Uh, the applicant, uh, were you complete, uh, had you completed your uh, presentation or is there anything more you'd like to get to before I um, go to the board? No, um, we, we do have some additional information. Real quickly on the traffic, um, we did prepare um, Monroe County uh, DOT plans for both entrances. Um, we had received comments. We had addressed their comments in February. And at that time, the Monroe County DOT had acknowledged verbally that they were ready to sign off on both entrances. 
Um, we also provided documentation of their verbal approval to the town engineer. Uh, that should be on file. And um, if we have any other, oh, I'd like to get back to drainage as well too, um, when you're ready. Certainly. Okay, so um, as, as a follow-up too, we did supply, um, as I mentioned, those two drainage exhibits, uh, enhanced drainage ex exhibits. We did present them to the town board uh, last week and uh, Amy Dake also reviewed the traffic with the town board um, as well. Do you have the ability to pull up those two drainage exhibits? I don't think so. Heather, is, is there a way to do that or Chris? Let me see if I can pull it up in my email real quick. One sec. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah, I think in the in the past we've had the applicant share their screen and, and show us what you wanted to show us, but just for just for a reference. Yeah. Which we can do. If you're comfortable with that, that might be the easiest way to convey what you're trying to show us. All right, <clears throat> one second here. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Neal. Okay. I have a thought which, you know, about the speed on Wood Hill, and it has to do with what is actually the traffic on Erie Station. Uh, the Erie Station that I'm thinking of goes from East Henrietta to basically West Henrietta. And at some point, the speed limit was, I think, lowered down to 35. And if you've ever traveled on Erie Station, you need to watch out for uh, Monroe County uh, Sheriff's Department because they give a lot of tickets, at least they have in the past, I know my daughter got one, that they lowered the speed limit down to 35 for an area which typically I think would be 50 miles an hour. And if it was possible to lower the speed on Ward Hill to, I, I think it currently is 45, I'm not positive about that. But if perhaps the speed could be lowered, and then we're asking Monroe County to uh, actually observe that road, I think that that might satisfy some of the concerns of the, the neighbors. However, I also think that if they did that and there was more uh, visual, visual uh, sheriff uh, participation on that road, it could be the residents that are going to get the tickets. So that was just my thought on how we could address what I think it really is the uh, the neighbor's concern. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, there was a lot of um, concern with that, but I don't believe that's in our purview to do that. Um, yeah, I think we can look at the study and the traffic and determine the influence that this project may have on the traffic, but uh, there are other avenues that have to be taken in order to modify speed limit and, and those other things. And I don't know whether that's a state road or a a county, it's a county road. Chris, Chris yeah, let, let me speak. Yeah, let me speak to that, Larry. So this is Chris Martin. Mm -hmm. I just pulled the engineer's report, and the engineer's report when it discusses traffic is the posted speed limit is 40 miles per hour. Um, so it's posted at 40. Do people go faster than that? Probably. Um, so having said that, um, it is a Monroe County road. And you know, certainly we can have conversations with Monroe County to see maybe if they can reduce that to 30 or 35 miles per hour. Um, also, we do have the town does have um, posted speed signs that they can mount that you know can tell how fast traffic is going. You know, we could do that for a short period of time, and that tends to slow people down. However, once those signs go away, you know, typically people speed back up again. Or, you know, you could have the county sheriff, you know, certainly monitor the traffic. However, once they're gone, then people go back to their old habits. Mm -hmm. But I'd be more than happy to contact the county to see if maybe they're interested in reducing the, the speed limit on Ward Hill Road. I think that would be a good idea. 
Thank you, Chris. Mr. Chairman? You were muted, Craig. Yes. I have both maps here. I have one that's proposed and one existing. Which one would the applicant like me to show? Gentlemen, did you have a specific one you wanted up there right now? Peter? Ryan and Peter, are you able to hear us? Peter, you're back on mute. There, go. there we Sorry, go. Sorry, we're back on. Uh, Heather has the maps, gentlemen. Uh, which one did you want up there first, please? Uh, the existing, pre-existing. Pre existing one? Okay. Yes, the existing one. And if not, I can bring it up. Can you see it? Yes. It's upside down. It's up. Yeah. That's all right. <clears throat> so, okay. so that's okay. So the red area is uh, representative of the area of the site that drains to the northeast. Um, there's an existing swale along the south side of Ward Hill Road, and that area um, under the current existing conditions drains to the northeast to that swale um, on the south side of Ward Hill Road, where it, has, where it continues east um, about eight or nine lots, and then there's a, a, a culvert underneath the road where it, it heads to the north and then continues on to the east. Um, after that. <clears throat> the blue area is representative of the um, existing condition area that drains to the southwestern portion of the site. The yellow lines represent uh, the, and the green arrows represent the um, current uh, drainage flow paths. So the existing area um, in blue is 42 and a half acres approximately. And under the existing conditions, the red area, which currently drains um, no northeast to Ward Hill Road, <clears throat> is approximately seven and a half acres. Now, the area um, represented in blue is drainage area A. Um, as the um, site drains to the um, southwest portion of the site, um, it enters a low point on the property, and then ultimately it is conveyed to um, a swale, an existing swale that conveys the runoff uh, to the west um, under Wood, Wood Ridge Trail via a culvert, and then it continues west uh, beyond that. If you want to switch to the proposed conditions map now, please. Yes, one second. Okay. <clears throat> All right, there you go. <clears throat> now, as you'll notice when this comes up on the screen, the area uh, in red that drains to uh, Ward Hill Road, as I said, to the northeast of the property, that area has been reduced from approximately seven and a half acres to two and a half acres now. So a five acre reduction of drainage um, is gonna result from the proposed conditions and the proposed development. As you can see, <clears throat> the majority of the site uh, will continue to drain to the uh, southwest. The additional five acres will be conveyed that way. But as this plan shows under the full development, it shows the 46 uh, residential units and the um, impervious area um, including the rooftops, driveways, and the dedicated road will all be conveyed um, to the southwestern portion of the site where the stormwater management facility is. There it will be detained and then released at controlled um, peak flow rates, which are uh, less than the existing conditions. <clears throat> and um, so for a 10-year storm, for example, um, under existing conditions for drainage area A, which is the blue area, it's 18.4 CFS or cubic feet per second 
is the peak flow um, off of the site in the lower left corner of that of that exhibit. <clears throat> Under proposed conditions, while there's an increase in area of five acres, that's what the pond does. The pond has been designed to detain that additional runoff from the um, impervious areas and release it at a controlled rate. So under the proposed conditions, <clears throat> the 10-year um, peak storm um, flow rate will be 10 CFS. So a reduction from 18 under existing to 10 CFS, which represents a 44.3% uh, reduction. And then for drainage area B, which represents the red area on the diagrams, under the 10-year uh, design storm, the peak flow from the site under the existing conditions is approximately 2.3 CFS when it has 7.5 acres of drainage, uh, contributing drain, drainage area. Under proposed conditions, <clears throat> the 10-year storm peak flow will be reduced um, from 2.3 to 1 CFS, which represents a 55.5% reduction. <clears throat> With that being said, does anybody have any questions on these drainage exhibits? Mr. Chairman, I had a question if I could. Yes, Mr. Neal. Oh, sure. Uh, Ryan, are the yellow lines, is, is that a swale that is catching the runoff or? So in the developed portion of the site, the yellow lines actually represent um, the storm sewer um, system. So those are, um, you, that's the storm sewer that's along the road. And then also the three lines that go to the north towards Ward, Ward Hill Road, um, they represent the uh, rear yard storm inlets that will catch the runoff from the hill from Ward Hill above. And then um, in the lower portion of the blue area, that represents um, uh, channelized swale or the uh, most common flow path um, through that drainage area. Okay, and it picks up the water coming out of the pond immediately, coming out of a pipe or something or other, and then carries it to the south. Am I correct? Yep, correct. Okay, thanks, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, Mr. Neal. Right. Like to... I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, go ahead, Patty. That's okay. I would just like to ask a question to kind of jump on board with what Larry said. You know, my one concern is, and I do see the new... Um, drainage layout indicating indicated by the yellow line or the storm sewers, but I just want to confirm, and it looks to me on this paper that the drainage has absolutely been mitigated from the existing drainage issues they're having to the northeast portion of this property um, to bring that drainage down to the southwest corner. And I just want to reiterate that for the confidence of the homeowners. Um, so we can have a discussion on the drainage that is currently going to those issues. Patty, this is Peter Bars, and, and I can tell you that's been one of the design principles from the outset of this project. And that goes back to meeting with town staff back even last fall about this project. And that was to provide a certain level of relief to the uh, drainage pattern that currently drains northeast to Ward Hill Road. What you can see on the exhibit that's very clear and but more also very important, as Ryan pointed out, there is a significant reduction in the drainage area itself that will be draining to the northeast because we're redirecting it to the southwest. But also the drainage that will go to the northeast is just going to be the rear yard areas of the development. All of the impervious surfaces, the roadways, the driveways, the houses, all will connect and drain to the proposed street. And that's why we highlighted the yellow line through the street, because that's the proposed storm sewer network that will collect the runoff from the development site, from the site to be developed and convey that to the stormwater management pond that will be constructed with the development so that the runoff that is discharged or, or, or goes to the northeast will just be rear yard area. And, it, and the, the fact of the matter is, is the size of the drainage area that's contributing runoff to the existing Ward Hill Road roadside drainage swale is being reduced from this property as a result of, of the proposed stormwater management plan that would be implemented with this project. 
Thank you for reiterating that, Peter. I appreciate it. Another thing I um, kind of questioned to myself, you know, I saw that very clearly on here, but I wanted to make sure we were verbally addressing that. But as we're um, rerouting the water down to the southwest corner to that proposed pond, which I saw had a very high wall and um, would hold, I wrote it down, but I'm not finding it right now, many, many thousands of gallons of water. Um, I just want to make sure that we are not readdressing any water issues and adding to issues that might be in the southwest corner. So the pond has been designed for, for the New York State DEC stormwater management design guidelines. Um, the, the actual embankment of the pond um, does not um, meet any um, dam criteria. So we're below any dam criteria of the New York State DEC. The pond is sized to um, control and detain um, the one year through the 100 year storm rain events and detain each storm at a controlled rate um, with the peak flow being less than under the existing conditions at that point where the swale exits the site to the west. Thank you for reiterating that. I appreciate it, Ryan. Mrs. Brill, anything else with drainage? No, I just wanted to um, bring both of those situations um, to topic. So thank you for confirming thank and you. reconfirming. Yep. Um, Ryan and Peter, anything uh, further? Uh, no, we're, we're just here at the pleasure of the board. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Neal. Um, uh, Chris, I had a question for you. Does this look like it's going to satisfy the neighbors that we're going to collect this water correctly? I mean, from an engineering standpoint, Larry, um, it should. So the answer is yes. Um, it'll reduce the runoff significantly, not only going to the northeast, but also to the southwest as well. Uh, also, we have our consultant, Vanguard Engineering. They also review the drainage as well, so we always get a second you know, a person reviewing it, reviewing the drainage study rather. And also I'd like to add too, is that once the pond is constructed, we also do, um, we had the applicant do a survey of the pond to make sure that it's designed or it's constructed in accordance with, with the design drawings. So we always have a lot of checks and balances, you know, during construction um, and then after construction as well. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate that. Listen, if I could add, add, ask one more question to kind of go along with that. Um, just want to address the elephant in the room. It, it, it looks to me like the drainage has absolutely been addressed and will take care of any existing issues. But I think I have read more times than just a few questions from the existing residents. What if this doesn't work? How will that be addressed down the road? Yeah, so this, let's say, for example, Patty, that, you know, there are issues, whether they're backyard issues or front yard, or maybe the pond's not working, you know, we can have the applicant's engineer, you know, make adjustments, and you make sure that there are no impacts downstream, you know, particularly with the backyard. Drainage is probably one of the biggest concerns that we see from subdivisions, and, you know, through the years, you know, we do a thorough review of design, or we have been, to make sure that those rear yard inlets work and that they're constructed properly and that the drainage goes towards them. And if it isn't, we ask the developer to fix that. You know, at the end of these projects, when we take dedication, we ask for a two year maintenance bond. And, you know, if there's anything that happens within those two years, then it's up to the developer to fix it. Think of it like a warranty on your car. Did that thank you your for question? confirming that. Yes, and thank you for confirming that. I really appreciate it. And I think the residents will appreciate that as well. I'll send Mrs. Brill. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, the chair will recognize Mr. McIntyre. Uh, Chris, uh, Steve McIntyre, you had several uh, drainage and grading questions on your June 10th notes here. One of them being that swale located on the east side of the subdivision between lots 40 and 41. Were those addressed by the developer? 
Um, I think there's still some, I still have some concerns with that, Steve. Um, even though it's a little bit further down, we want to try to take as much water southwest as we can. And looking at the spot elevation and some of the contours, it didn't look quite right. So I just want the, app, the applicant to take a second look at it to see if that swale or drainage swale can be a little better defined to take that water south like we'd like it to. Have you had the conversation with the developers? I mean, we've got them right here now. Should we ask them if they? <laughs> well, I, I did give them my comments, and I know they will be addressed adequately before we'll sign off on the drawings. But <laughs> if Peter or Ryan have anything they would like to talk about, then absolutely, they they have the floor. You know, I guess Chris. I, oh, go ahead. Peter or Ryan, do you have any uh, embellishment on this comment? particularly number four under drainage and grading? Yes, um, we did look at that swale and um, we can provide uh, additional spot elevations to, to further clarify that. But um, I'd just like to add, as, as Pete mentioned before too, um, that, that area going to that swale um, is only gonna be under proposed conditions, just lawn areas, so no impervious areas is uh, designed to enter that swale. So it should just be lawn areas draining to it. And we'll add, um, we'll look to add um, further spot elevations on the grading plan just to clarify um, the direction, the ultimate direction of that swale to meet uh, Chris's comments. Under drainage and grading, you don't see any showstoppers there. Ryan? Uh, no, sorry. pretty well. Would you like to move into any other concerns you might have? Uh, um, you know, are we doing a round table now? Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, Peter and Ryan, um, I'm going back to these comments again with this detached unit option. Could you kind of go into that a little bit more? Well, uh, actually, if, if Ron Hinkle wants to address that, I mean, uh, and I think Ron would be best to address that. Who would be? Ryan Hinkle? Yep. Yeah. Ron, you are on mute. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we have decided, we've listened to the, we've listened to some of the um, people from uh, uh, the previous board meeting, and I've listened to people that I've been talking to about this development, and we have decided to go to single family um, patio homes with this, detached homes. So. Single family only. I'm sorry? It would be a single family only home. Correct. There shows a detail in here of how the lots would change to single family on page sheet two. Of um, there was also a comment down there about the sidewalk on Ward Hill Road. Are you committed to that? Particularly in lieu of Mr. Neal's comments about traffic safety, um, keeping the pedestrians and the traffic away from each other. Um, I have not seen that one. It's, uh, Ron, I can, I, I can speak to that a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, as I do, uh, yeah, we, we've not seen the comments. Uh, I, I think you said they were June 10th, Mr. McIntyre. We haven't seen those yet, but I did have a conversation with Chris today and Ron and I, we were part of a conversation, I want to say a week or so ago, uh, with uh, the supervisor, deputy supervisor, and that, and there was the discussion. Remember, Ron raised about the um, about putting sidewalk in along the property's frontage on Ward Hill Road as, as part of this project. So yes, uh, uh, on Ward that, Hill, yes, yeah, that that request is there, but so we just haven't seen the actual wording of it. That was requested from the town board. Yes. It, it was a it was a, a suggestion made that that may be something and and I think the key, Mr. McIntyre, as you brought up, and it was kind of the conversation we had with Chris Martin today too, is it's 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 a good thing as it relates to the concern because it can help address the, some of the concerns that have been raised uh, through the public hearing to date. Uh, 
Okay, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm getting a, are you saying you are in favor of it or not in favor of it? I, and I, I'm going to speak here for, for the developer that he's definitely willing to consider it, but we, we haven't seen the comment yet to see what the parameters of the request are. But in the discussions we had, I want to say a week and a half, two weeks ago, we were amenable to it, but we needed to know what, as you heard Mr. Hinkle say, yes, sidewalks are on the frontage, yes. So, but we haven't seen the actual comment yet or the actual request. Yeah, the comment itself, if I may uh, just read uh, per comments from the town board, a sidewalk should be provided along Ward Hill Road along the subdivision frontage. Okay, right. And that, and Ron, that is what we discussed. So yes, yes. that is, that is acceptable. That's acceptable. Thank you. Okay, good. I'd like to acknowledge the, the attendance of uh, Supervisor Schultz. Welcome. I just have the, uh, you guys Thank you. Jim, I'm sorry. What is being handed out? Thank you. It's the. Uh, it's what I just gave to you. Town board seeker input for proposed forest view subdivision. Sorry, Steve, uh, Mr. Supervisor, we really can't hear you. Can you talk into a mic possibly? Um, sorry. Um, so I just handed out the uh, the town board seeker input. Um, I kept getting interrupted, so I couldn't quite get it done before the meeting. But I sent it out electronically asking the town clerks to forward it because I don't have all of your emails. But for the folks who were in here, I handed them. Since I knew they didn't have computers, I handed them a printout version. But uh, like I said, you will get um, you will get an electronic version as well. It's just it's just the input. Since I understand that um, I wanted you to get it now, so you have time to digest it before your uh, secret determination. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Mr. McIntyre, I think the floor was, was yours, uh, correct? All set, You're all set? Thank you. And the chair will, will recognize Mr. Page. Thank you. Uh, Peter and Ryan, I'm, uh, I'm disappointed that you haven't seen these comments yet um, because most of our time and study was, was geared towards the comments sent by Chris to the planning board on June 10th. So now that I know that you haven't seen them, um, I'm going to assume as a former board member and, and knowing um, the financial ramifications of building um, on lots, I'm assuming you're gonna go with the 278 model. So my comments will be directed with the understanding that's probably the way you're gonna go. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. So um, I'll, I'll just pick out a couple of the most important ones. First of all, as far as the sidewalk was concerned, I would never approve this project without that sidewalk that the town board recommended. I think it's pertinent, especially with school children being picked up. Um, I'm not sure the buses will go down into a 278. I'm not sure whether there'll be sidewalks in that 278 development. And, um, usually we have them on collector roads, but I don't think this model is a collector road. So I'm not sure how that works, but that sidewalk in front may be very important as far as child safety. Um, um, Rick, yeah, Rick, I can answer that. I mean, yes, there will be a sidewalk along the subdivision street and the subdivision street will be a dedicated town road. Uh, so school buses will, should, I, I don't want to speak for the school district, but uh, it will be a public street. So they can use the street, but there also will be a sidewalk along it also. Okay. The thank subdivision you. street. Thank you. Um, I'm not an engineer, but I, 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 there is a comment about the ownership of land for the fire access road. Can you tell me where the location of that is? Is it, is it to the west of the main entrance? Correct, it's, it's to the west of the main entrance and it's in the rear yards uh, to the west of lots one through 10. Okay, that's, that's what I thought. Um, there's a comment there that you haven't seen about 
Um, the ownership of the land for the fire access road should be discussed with the town staff. The town may prefer having access easement instead of owning the land, just to let you know. Um, okay. My recommendation would be the easement, but that's not part of what we're going to mm -hmm. do here tonight. Sure. Um, There was also a comment about there's a possibility, I was going to ask Chris, uh, but you haven't seen the comment yet. Due to the increase in sewage directed towards the Country Hills Estate pump station, upgrades to the station may be required. This is in the process of being reviewed with the town staff. Um, I don't know if that's been done yet or not, but I'm assuming that any improvements that need to be done to that pump station would be borne by the applicant, is that correct? Yeah, I mean, currently, right now, we are replacing the pumps. So it, regardless of this project, that the pumps are being replaced. And from our, our look at the storage in the pump station itself, uh, because the water consumption is a lot less than what we initially thought it was going to be, then it looks like the storage is okay as well. Those are the two big things that we look at. So that, that should not be an issue. Okay, thank you, Chris. And then as far as the preliminary approval for subdivision, um, the rest of it is pretty much engineering and uh, so on. I'm, I'm all set. Thank you, Mr. Page. The chair will recognize Mr. Eckert. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have a, a couple of comments based off of uh, the conversation so far this evening. Um, I wanted to go back real quick and uh, enter in a comment onto the, um, the speeding on Ward Hill Road. Um, let me also start that by asking a question, Chris. I know we asked for accident information from the county. Did were they were able to uh, send anything? We did uh, right after the um, the town board workshop meeting, uh, or the town board meeting rather. We asked the uh, Monroe County DOT to supply us with that information, and we have not yet received it, but the request has been made. Okay, I'd be interested to see what some of that was. Um, I know uh, we also internally requested our person or the town owned uh, speed limit signs be uh, installed on Ward Hill to uh, try to ascertain some of the speeding um, uh, habits that are out there. I, I know due to COVID, we also had skewed results, uh, but we are looking forward to grabbing that information and sharing it with the sheriff's office. Uh, the captain is also eagerly uh, awaiting any other additional information to help with some reinforcement. Um, the uh, topsoil pile, I see um, number three in a comment, Chris, I think you've already addressed it. I I'd like the topsoil pile pulled away from the backyards on Ward Hill. Um, possibly even off the extension road that's going to be uh, back to the cabin um, so that uh, sifting or any other dirt or dust that uh, from that operation doesn't affect the nearby residents. Okay. I'll make also a point coming up on the sidewalks. Um, Mr. Page, the, uh, actually the applicant uh, from the beginning also uh, when installing sidewalks uh, asked our interpretation uh, how we would like them installed. Uh, we uh, met with the drainage foreman, Mike Catalano, and uh, determined whether or not a setback to the sidewalk was a better fit for this location, uh, different from what Trailview has now, which is a sidewalk directly on the backside of the gutter. Uh, Trailview right. South, we initiated a sidewalk on the backside of the gutter, easier for the plow truck to clear on a regular basis because there aren't any other sidewalks down there uh, in that corner. Um, the drainage foreman, sidewalk foreman um, said that the five foot grass space and then the sidewalk would be better suited for this subdivision, similar to that of Branch Brook on the north side. Since there's a sidewalk plow right there, they would cross Ward Hill and uh, clean those sidewalks with the same as Branch Brook. So we um, looked at sidewalks interior on both different types for this uh, subdivision. Um, grading, uh, I know has been brought up a lot, uh, specifically um, from the neighbors of Ward Hill as well as Branch Brook. Um, I um, am looking forward to not only fixing those issues with the applicant, uh, I want the um, comment again that I made in the previous planning board meeting to uh, go again on record that we will have a very high um, presence 
on this construction site uh, throughout the process to make sure that the town is not only completely informed of everything that's going on, but that everything that is being constructed meets and or exceeds town of Henry specifications. So uh, that comment I brought up before, and I wanted to make sure that the residents were aware that uh, Harvest Hills, unfortunately, was not in my purview prior. We will still work on fixing those issues. Uh, Trailview was, and we have gone through and fixed those issues as they have come up, and we will continue to do so in the, uh, the new subdivision up here if it does also get approved. So those are my uh, other comments based off of um, <coughs> public information and the other uh, items that I've heard in this meeting. So I'm all set, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ecker. Now the chair will recognize Mr. Borkowski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as this is going on, I was trying to go through the supervisor's notes and kind of like uh, fast track read them here, um, especially regarding the seeker. So I didn't get to all that. Um, and I, I don't know if others are doing the same thing. So as I talk, maybe some people can chip in on what the supervisor provided us. Um, as far as the drainage goes, I'm okay with that. I, you know, BMA, BME has been in here a lot and um, they're a reputable company. Um, they're thorough. And um, I asked them very uh, clearly at the last meeting, will this be a net profit to the people in our town? And they assured me that it would be a net profit. So because they're reputable and thorough, I, I believe them. And I, I think that honestly, the drainage is so currently bad that almost anything would be an improvement. So I appreciate that from you guys. Um, and, and I appreciate uh, Amy Dake being here. Um, you know, a lot of the questions that we had regarding this were traffic. Um, now, what I don't uh, like is that because of the COVID and you brought this up, the best data we have for the particular stuff that I'm worried about is 99 or 1995. We're talking 15 years ago. And um, that, that kind of scares me as far as what's going on because we touched on it. We touched on sight lines. And one of my big things was sight lines because I personally have been over to this uh, development, uh, Branchbrook, and I've taken left and right turns off of Branchbrook. And at times it was scary. Some of that goes to Mr. Neal's point where they're speeding. And I understand that. And I know that when you run those things and, and correct me if I'm wrong, BME, but um, the study that you used was uh, studying, I know the speed limit's 40, but they said 45 miles an hour. And when was that particular study done for the sight lines? We, went, we conducted a sight distance review um, earlier this year in February. Okay. Um, yeah, I thought before you said it was like a, a couple years old and uh, sight distance is what I meant, not sight lines. Thank you. Um, yep. uh, me personally, I get it. I, I'm, I'm not doing this scientifically. I, I, maybe I just got unlucky at the time of day I was doing it. But knowing that just with that one road coming out to Ward Hill, I can't imagine putting one directly opposed to it and trying to figure out who's turning right, who's turning left. So, you know, I, I can't go against the data. I am a scientific kind of guy. I'm just saying personally, something... <laughs> doesn't feel right about it to me. Um, also, you know, there, there's uh, talk about the neighbors were saying that once traffic starts going through, they're gonna take the path, path of least resistance and go through the neighborhoods and then come back out on East Henrietta Road rather than doing Ward Hill. So uh, to me, those are, those are big concerns. I also wanna say that, you know, without knowing the results of um, the meeting that's supposed to happen with the town board on July 6th, I think that sometimes like we're getting the cart before the horse with us talking about any approval on this. I, I may be wrong with that. Um, and, and you know, there's other things and, and maybe our, our uh, board attorney can explain this a little bit better, but part of the, the whole 278 is the idea of a proper incentive to be able to do these things. And I know that um, the supervisors talked to you. I know that the board chairman has talked to you, um, but I, I question whether the incentives are great enough, great enough to allow the 278. So I, I don't know where, what falls under our purview, what power do we have, or is that purely a town board issue on whether the incentive is great enough to issue the 278? Because in my opinion, from, from what we've been through with this, I don't think the incentive is great enough for the 278, but that's just my opinion. Um, and that brings up the whole viability of this project. Is that under our purview, Dan, or is that purely a town board decision to make? Uh, whether or not to 
accept the proposal for the open land is up to the town board, whether or not the benefit under 278 is uh, substantial enough uh, to allow the aberration, so to speak, from traditional zoning is really up to the planning board. Um, you know, I this is kind of a hybrid thing. I, I kind of have an issue with the whole 278 thing being invoked, but I will, it, it, once everybody has spoken, um, I, I, I'll tell you, I'm gonna be recommending that you defer approval um, and I'll tell you why. And I'm gonna ask the applicant to address a few issues as well. I just don't want to interrupt everyone. No, and Dan, I, I was done. I mean, you're answering my questions, and I think that it's a, maybe a good segue to what you're about to say because I'm of the feeling that you know I'm not willing to say no about this right now, but I am certainly I've got still got questions. I want to know the viability of the 278. So that being said, those are my questions, and I'll I'll defer to you, Dan. I appreciate it. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Mistrella. Shall we wait till the others speak, and then I'll I'll recognize you. Is that okay? That would be great, yes. Thank you. Uh, board, the chair will recognize uh, Mrs. Brill. Thank you. Uh, many of my questions have been answered. Um, it is unfortunate. We do have answers here from BME. However, they're addressing comments dated March 5th as opposed to what we're looking at today, um, dated June 10th. Um, so if I can address a few of those, again, some of them have previously been addressed. Um, regarding under general number four, how will the new trails be connected to the Lehigh Valley Trail? I didn't see that on the drawings that we were given today. So Peter, the interrupt for a minute. This is uh, Chris yeah, Martin. Sorry. And my apologies for you not getting the comments. Um, I'll find out what happened. But in the meantime, I did send both you and Ryan um, an email with the attachment with it. Yep, so just received you that. got it. Yep. If, you want, if you have it, take a look at it and see if you have any concerns with any of those comments. Okay. Uh, I, I guess while while we're waiting, um, the one thing I'd like to address is the the trails. Um, we'd like to offer. We haven't shown them on the plan at this point. Um, Part of this project is, provide, is providing approximately 28, 29 acres of parkland uh, below the project site to the south that will allow future access to the Lehigh Valley Trail System to the south. Um, we'd like to offer, and the applicant would like to offer, that the trails um, be identified in the field via a site walk um, in anticipation of a future uh, approval for this pro project. Um, then we would meet in the field and identify the, the best route for accessing the Lehigh Valley trail system through our project site. I would like to see how we are going to address the trail connection prior to approval. Uh, it, um, Patty, I don't have a problem with being able to do that, uh, you know, given the fact that uh, the application is going to get tabled tonight. So um, we're scheduled, so that if, I don't mean to jump ahead, but if that means we'll be coming back to see you, I think on July 7th, so two, two or three weeks from now. I, I'll, Chris, I think we can get out there and, and, and get something figured out of how we would do that so we can uh, address that comment within your um, June 10th comments. Uh, I, I don't see a problem with that. Chris Martin again. So yes, Peter, if you and Ryan um, you want to go out with one of you know the town staff, myself, and maybe Craig, we'd be more than happy to go and do that with you. And I can tell you uh, just from skimming through the June 10th comments, uh, I'm not seeing anything in here uh, that we could not address. Uh, but I would let Mr. Mastrella after he. Uh, provides his input. The one comment I do think we should address or discuss this evening is comment B8, which is about the clustering 
the use of 278 and the responsibilities of the town board and the, and the planning board as it relates to that. Um, I, I do have a, some input on that or an opinion on that. Uh, but so, but the other comments we're fine with. I'm not seeing anything there that we can't do. Peter, would you like to address that now or would you like to wait? I guess I'd like to hear Mr. B Mastrella because he, what he may say, I may agree with. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, th that would be a good idea. Yeah. Dan, this would you like to address that now? No, I'd like to wait till everybody else, and then you, certainly everybody's welcome to join in after. Very good. If I may continue then, regarding number seven, per comments from town board, the sidewalk provided along Ward Hill along the subdivision frontage. When the question was first asked tonight, it was asked about Ward Hill frontage, and the answer was yes, this is acceptable. But when we talked a little further into it, it was discussed that sidewalks would be within the development. And I just wanna clarify, will there be sidewalks within the development as long as, as addressed in number seven, along the frontage of the subdivision on Ward Hill Road? Yes, there will be both. Thank you. You address that, address this, address this. And those are the questions in addition to what previously have been addressed. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mrs. Brill. Chair will recognize Mr. Neal. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, Chris, um, I sent you an email which you responded to me the other day, but just for all the board members, we had an email from a from a resident who indicated that he didn't think that the project uh, qualified for a, uh, a cluster. And I was wondering if you could just address that. Well, I think that's gonna be addressed. Well, Larry, this is Chris Martin again. Um, I think that's gonna be addressed by probably Peter and Dan when we get further into this. Um, so I think I'm gonna to defer to them. Okay, the well, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, so we're going to put off that uh, question for right now. Okay, um, the next thing I ask is, um, there was a response to um, one of our um, comments here dated uh, the 28th. It actually came from, uh, from you, Kurt, Peter. And the question was, uh, had to deal with the number of trees which were on the, uh, first of all, on the property. And it was recommended that the other half of the trees, which I'm gonna say is roughly 60, would be used for some uh, landscaping. And you basically responded yes, but you responded not trees, but bushes or shrubs. Um, to me, landscaping with brushes or, or bushes or, or shrubs is not adequate. Um, can we go back to what they had requested, which would be trees? Uh, 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 yes, we can. Uh, I, the, what we were proposing is, was a mix of shrubs and trees. And, the, I, I, and Chris uh, can verify this, I believe. Uh, rule of thumb in Henrietta is you can, in lieu of planting a tree, you can provide two shrubs. The point, and then our landscape architects prefer to do plantings of a mixture of shrubs and trees because you get a more effective buffer and landscape plan that way because the shrubs fill the understory of the trees and things like that. Um, but if the town desires it strictly to be all trees, it can be all trees. Um, it will defer to the planning board's request on that. Okay. Well, uh, it was Chris's recommendation that the balance of the trees be used in the open spaces uh, as a buffer. And uh, to me, brushes, uh, bushes or shrubs aren't as much, but uh, I guess the, uh, the board can decide on that, what they want to do. Um, the only other thing that I had, or actually I had two things, uh, and maybe you've answered this, Peter, I'm not sure, but um, normally, and what we've done in the past, 
if a applicant did not receive the comments um, and didn't get a chance to, uh, to answer the question, can you respond to those? Uh, we typically would um, uh, table that application, giving the applicant time to review those uh, comments. And I know that you've received them now, you've had a chance to talk, uh, look at them and make some general comments, but um, should we be tabling this, which we may be doing anyway, but should we be tabling it because you didn't get a chance to look at the comments? To that question, my answer is no. Uh, just again, as I said, I've read through them right here, right now. I'm not seeing any comment here besides the clustering one, which we want to discuss, that affects a planning decision. These comments primarily are technical in nature. I think uh, other board members have identified specific ones of concern, of, of interest, I should say, to the board members, and, and we've responded to them, I believe, in a positive manner. Uh, so to answer your question directly, Mr. Neal, my answer is no to that question. Thank you. Um, my last question has to do with uh, the paperwork that the supervisor handed out. Is that anything we need to be making a decision tonight? I have not had a chance to look at it yet, Mr. Neal, myself. Um, certainly as we move along, uh, we'll have a couple of options tonight. We can entertain a motion to approve. We can entertain a motion to table. There are certain things. Uh, I know there's a lot of neighborhood interest in this application. I know that a lot of the neighbors feel like their voices may not have been heard at this point. Um, so we will discuss that uh, in a few moments after, uh, after you're finished and after Mr. Mastrella has a chance to, to speak. Well, I'm all set, so you can Thank you. proceed with Dan. Mr. Ella. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, can I interrupt for two seconds? Yes, Mr. Ecker. Yep. I'm sorry. So I, I, before Mr. Mistrella, um goes into a lot, I, I have a question based off what I believe now is a, a little bit of confusion from Mr. Burkowski's comment. Um, I'm looking at the traffic study, and forgive me, I don't want to take, uh, Matt, and I'm not going to take your words out of context, but the if I heard correctly, the traffic counts... You, do you believe they're from 1995? Well, I see that they're 95 to 18, but when she, when uh, Amy was asked if they were from 95, she said yes, and then they basically, it looks like they extrapolated numbers after that. So okay. I'm yeah. under the information that the traffic counts are from 15, 16, and 17, but the turning movements, which were from the Harvest Hills, um, traffic study is from 95. So which directions that they go, but the traffic itself, the AADT is from 15, 16, 17. And I'm, I'm understanding from reading the report that that's extrapolated to a 2020 uh, traffic. Right. Is Thanks Amy for the clarification. Can, yeah. yeah and, can and we I, get clarification that that's true? I'm here. You're correct, Craig. Actually, you're both correct. So the turning movement counts are from the 1995 study the ADT counts are re more recent from 2017 and 2018. Okay. And those 2017 and 2018 counts and the historical ADT information is what was used to extrapolate the turning movement counts out to 2020. Great, and, and, and did you and, add a background from 15, 16 or 17 uh, to add an existing traffic data to become an existing for 2020? So what we did, we actually didn't add growth to it. And the reason is, if you look at the historical data from 1995 to 2017 on Ward Hill Road, it's almost identical. It, the, okay. That count stayed flat. No traffic. There was very little, if any, traffic growth at all. And the same thing with the traffic on Pinnacle Road and on East Henrietta Road. On East Henrietta Road, the traffic volumes in 2018 are actually slightly lower than what they were in 1995. And that's kind of what we've seen across the board throughout Monroe County and other areas that we've done work in. Traffic volumes increased through like 2007. And then when we had the economic crash in 2008, we saw traffic volumes drop off significantly and they haven't really come back to that level. No, you're correct, and I appreciate you going through that because, yes, I'm familiar with older studies that would add background and to get up to, but you're right, with flat data, you wouldn't have anything to extrapolate from or to add to. So, so right. but I, 
Matt, are we clear then the, the traffic data? Yeah, and, is, and actually I, I was clear, but thanks for clarifying it because my <laughs> concern has always been the turns. Okay. So, so it, you know, I know we're talking about negligible um, increase in traffic and I understand that's the newer data, but the turns, I've been there, I've watched them and now we're adding another uh, side to turn. So I think the turns are bad now and then we're going to add a road across from it. And then the okay, turn good. data was from 95. So yeah. So that, that helps clarify my, um, your thoughts too then uh, for that for me. Okay. My, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I apologize for interrupting, but I wanted to make that clear. Thank you, Mr. Eckert. Uh, Mr. Mastrella. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, there is some questions about the 278 and the code. So I'll sort of start out with my take on it. Uh, the code itself does reference that project review under this open space incentive option uh, shall follow the process under section 295-60 cluster subdivision per New York State Town Law section 278. That was a provision that was added uh, some years ago after the original design of this statute by uh, Bay and Associates, who did the rural residential study um, uh, on behalf of the town and, and took a lot of time and effort doing it. Um, in my opinion, if the applicant can satisfy the requirements of the uh, of the town section, then they have satisfied uh, uh, 278. I, I don't really think that 278 is the appropriate measure because it, it talks about a variance from what the zoning call, code calls for. And actually, if they meet the uh, 295-521 open space incentive options of our code, uh, there, there really is no variance then. So that being said, uh, you know, the question is from, one question is from a legal point of view, have they met the 295-521 uh, requirements. And so BME can address the issue. There's a, there's a letter from uh, Benjamin Skomsky uh, dated June 14, 2020. And he uh, previously broached this at the public hearing before the board. Uh, is the applicant being given, you know, multiple credits for the same thing in obtaining their 25% options. Uh, I reviewed this, that I, you know, um, well, I think in October of 2019, uh, wherein Mr. Vars set out in a letter to the board why he believed the, uh, the three incentives were, um, appropriate and it, in the discretion of the planning board to determine whether he has met those. And I would encourage you to review uh, those sections and see if he has. And the sections themselves certainly have some overlap in them, but I, I, they are distinguishable from one another and in my opinion, the applicant has met those distinctions. However, some of them are discretionary with the planning board. Even if they've met the distinctions, do you want to grant that incentive? So that's something that the planning board has to consider, and I can elaborate further uh, if need be. Um, but it, you know, certainly uh, BME can address the issue of whether they're entitled to all three of those. 
uh, Mr. Skomsky, who, by the way, is an attorney and, you know, my job is, at least in part, to make sure that I'm protecting the town and, and the planning board uh, from litigation, if possible, and if it's not possible to protect from litigation, to sort of make sure that we're on the right side of it at the end of things. And uh, he has also addressed that uh, he believes that there are exceptions uh, in, in the 278 application that, that some land that is being considered shouldn't be considered. So I will ask BME to address that as well. Um, just so that we have a record and we know what we're deciding on. My other issue with action tonight is that uh, the planning board declared its intent to be lead agency on this on March or uh, on May uh, 28. Um, generally speaking, interested agencies are accorded 30 days to, uh, to respond if they wanna respond, if they wanna object. And then there's a process for determining who should be lead agency. Uh, I understand from a, a rather lengthy conversation I had with the town attorney this afternoon that the town board has in fact uh, already stated that uh, they consent to the planning board being lead agency. A conversation I had with Mr. Martin earlier today indicated that uh, the only other uh, interested agency would be the Monroe County Department of Transportation and that they have submitted comments. I don't know that they have actually responded to the uh, request regarding the planning board being lead agency. And, and that leaves me a little concerned because they're supposed to have 30 days to do it. So especially in light of the fact that the town board has seen fit to call for a public hearing, and I don't think they're required to, I think they're, they're doing this out of concern for uh, you know, the neighbors and the neighborhood in the application, but they are going to hold a public hearing on January 6th uh, after their workshop. It's a Monday. January? Or I'm sorry, July 6th. I apologize. Thank you, Patty. Thank you. Um, it, it, and that, that's a little out of their accord, but that has to do with the, uh, the pause order and the COVID restrictions, which give the board the authority up to and through July 7 to, to hold a virtual public hearing, but don't address what happens uh, after July 7. And their next regularly scheduled town board meeting isn't until July 8. So it's my understanding that the town board, it, it, to give some clarity to this is offering or not offering is scheduling to hold a, a hearing on July the 6th so that there's some clarity and certainty and that the uh, anybody who has comments uh, has the ability to make them without having to reschedule everything. The planning board's next meeting is July 7th. The town board's next meeting after that is July 8th. Uh, I don't know if the town attorney had the opportunity to discuss with the supervisor or members of the town board um, the, the agenda, but we discussed and he suggested that the uh, town board could hold the public hearing on July the 6th withhold action until July the 8th. That would allow the planning board to 
uh, formally assume lead agency and in fact make a seeker determination on July 7 um, and would actually afford the planning board the opportunity if it so chose to entertain any comments made at the uh, town board public hearing and uh, any suggestions that, that the town board may have uh, for it July 7 seeker determination, it would fulfill uh, the 30 day requirement for notification to interested agencies. And it would not delay the, if approvals were going to be made, it would not delay applicant at all in obtaining its, re, its approvals while at the same time allowing further public input um, that could relate to a seeker determination. So, uh, it, you know, BME is more than welcome to address the questions I asked a few moments ago this evening. Um, they, they're more than welcome, in my opinion, to address them uh, in, in writing if, the, if they so choose uh, prior to our July 7 meeting. But my recommendation would be to table this both for a uh, seeker determination and, um, and approval or disapproval uh, of the subdivision, the preliminary subdivision uh, application until the July 7 meeting uh, at, at what I, you know, suggest is no real time expense to the applicant. This has been a long application. They, you know, they're certainly ultimately entitled to a decision one way or another. But I think this, since there's going to be a, a July 6 public hearing and, uh, you know, a July 8th action by the town board, if one is appropriate, it is no real delay. Thank you, Mr. Mistrella. Um, yeah, my comment was going to be that due to the high level of public interest, um, in my opinion, it would be worthwhile. Hold on a second. To, to uh, postpone this and, and uh, allow the public to express their opinions on this. Uh, but I leave that up to the board. And um, BME, is there anything else you'd like to say at this point? Yes, um, just a few things uh, in response to Mr. Mistrella. I would say, uh, in, in general, concur with everything Dan laid out as it relates to the process. Um, a couple things I would like to say, though, is, um, first of all, um, let, let me take a step back. We'll, we'll touch on some issues here right now, but we will submit written information to, I'm going to say, reinforce and support our position so that the board has it in writing and has the ability to digest it between now and our next appearance on July 7th. Um, but um, first and foremost is uh, the use of Town Law 278, the clustering provisions, uh, the application submitted as it relates to this uh, through the Open Space Incentive Law, and also the town's rural residential design guidelines. All three of those are critical factors in this application. And what I would recommend the board to do, and we will reinforce this, is all of that was addressed within the original application letter uh, dated February 5th, 2020, um, where we identified the three areas under the open space incentive law as to why we felt, as Mr. Mastrella said, why we felt we, um, uh, that those could be applied to this project. So I would ask you to review that. That letter also goes through the, the various tenets of the rural residential design guidelines as to how this project um, addresses those. That information's there. The, but the thing I want to touch base on is 
the overall umbrella of using Town Law 278, the clustering provisions, um, yes, that is, a, that is a discretionary decision of the planning board to apply 278, but actually Town Law 278 allows either the applicant to request the approval under 278 or the, the planning board themselves can actually require an applicant to utilize Town Law 278. But I think the important thing to remember here, and this is what we will uh, provide additional written documentation on, the, the clustering of this subdivision in lieu of developing this property is two acre lots, which would be allowed, which is the requirements under the RR zone. We're proposing a cluster de development so that the proposed development would be clustered into uh, 15 acres of a 100 acre, 108 acre site, which yields significant benefits to the town of Henrietta. The governing provision of town law 278 is that, um, that the applicant is afforded certain um, uh, waivers to the bulk area requirements of the district in return for identified benefits to the town. That is separate than the open space incentive. And a couple of the key ones are, is, is the fact that this plan by clustering meets a stated goal of the town of Henrietta as it rela relates to agri agricultural farmland protection, and that being the placement of the conservation easement on the Larkin farm. That does not happen without a cluster subdivision development. This project also yields 30 plus acres of land that the town board has expressed interest in as town park land. That does not happen without a cluster subdivision. And, and then there's other things uh, as, uh, as it relates to maintenance of infrastructure. We will go through all of this, but the point is clustering this development is the right way to go because of it does condense the development into a compact, developable area of the site and provides vast tracts of open space, a stated goal of the town. Um, and like I said, I'm not going to re-go re through the open space incentive. Those are in those letters. We'll reinforce that. With regards to seeker, um, it is an unlisted action. I guess I just need one clarification. I think, Mr. Mistrella, you had said that the, the planning board's declaration of intent to be lead agency was issued on May 28th. I is believe so. Correct? At our last meeting, yes. Okay, so I guess my question is that did not occur at the March 10th meeting when we held the public hearing? I, I believe it did not. It, it occurred on the, uh, our last meeting, which was two and a half weeks ago, three weeks ago. Okay. okay. You're muted, Chris. Chris, you're muted. Chris, you're muted. All right, how's that? There you go. So, so typically, for an unlisted action, um, you have two options. You can do a coordinated review and not a coordinated review. So if it's a type one action, you have to do a coordinated review. Mm -hmm. Typically, for these types of subdivisions, we don't do a coordinated review. For the past couple ones that we've done, it's oh. very rare that, unless it's a type one action, you know, to, to do a coordinated review. So after talking with the supervisor, we thought that, you know what, maybe we should take a step back. And, you know, even though it's not a type one action, it's an unlisted action, we should still do a coordinated review on it. So that's why the planning board at their May 28th meeting declared their intent to be the lead agency. And we could mm -hmm. still do that with the way the meetings were set up. Now there's only two involved agencies. There's sure. the town board, and the Monroe County Department of Transportation. And so um, that declaration was sent to the county DOT? That's that? correct. Okay. Yeah, we just haven't heard back from them yet, that's all. Okay. The planning board doesn't meet between now and July 7th again, correct? It does not, right. no. We're into our summer so, schedule, so July 7th right. is our next meeting. Yeah, so there's nothing to gain of us reaching out to the county to get a letter because the 30 days will have expired anyways. Correct. Yeah, okay. Correct, and, and certainly you, you wouldn't want a, a very hyper-technical 
uh, defect like that to sure. hamper anything. No, I, yeah, I appreciate that exactly. Okay. So I guess yes, Mr. Chairman, what I would say, you know, we acknowledge that the board is 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 going to table uh, this action this evening, um, and and we will actually use that opportunity to do a few things. Uh, as we said, we will um, meet with staff to discuss so that we can get the Lehigh Valley Trail general connection plan mapped out so that can be provided to the board. Um, we will provide written responses and if necessary, revised plans to the June 10th memo um, from Mr. Martin that he's now provided to us. We will also will provide some, I, I'm gonna say some supplemental information as it relates to comments that the board has received from others as to the, uh, the justification the applicant believes as to why uh, we meet the the criteria of the open space incentives for the board's consideration. We acknowledge that is a board consideration uh, to do that. And obviously we will go through all of this with at the July 6th town board public hearing. I, I guess the last thing I, I would like to say, because it was a question, I can't remember what board member asked it. To me, the code is pretty clear is that the planning board is charged with granting the subdivision approval including the use of town law 278 and also applying the open space incentive. The only thing the town board, the, the only action the town board is required to take is whether they would agree to accept the one 30 acre parcel um, as open space to the town of Henrietta. That's the action that's required of the town board. Everything else as it relates to the land use plan and, and, and everything, I believe rests with the planning board as Mr. Mestrella said. 295.52.1, the open space incentive, says it shall be applied following the clustering law of 295.60. 295.60 is the section of the code that uh, what are the, what empowers the planning board and sets the powers and duties of the planning board. So to me, it's very clear that all of that rests with this board. Uh, by and large, I would agree. I, I would just say that beyond the, the 30 acres, you said it's really up to the town board to approve the open space. So Correct. the entirety. not including that which is being dedicated to the farming use, the agriculture use. But that is correct, because they I, do have to, yeah, they have to establish the conservation easement. That is correct. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you, gentlemen. Um, any other comments? Okay, the chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes, who was that? I'm sorry, Mr. Borkowski? Matt Borkowski, um, I, I will make a motion to table this. Um, one, to consider whether the incentives are acceptable. And I appreciate that, uh, Peter, I, I love everything you said. And I, I'll, I, even though I, it sounds like you've already kind of written some of this, if you could make it kind of stupid proof for a person like me, that would be great. Um, so to consider whether the incentives are acceptable, um, Mr. Mistrella mentioned the uh, seeker determination. And honestly, just to hear what uh, new things might happen during the uh, town board hearing. Um, so a motion to table PB324. Okay, I guess first though, um, uh, looks like we need to also, uh, we do need to make a motion on the seeker. So that's my fault. So let, let's do that first. Uh, Mr. Borkowski, do you wish to make a, a motion on the seeker? You don't need to. We don't need to? And, and, no, and, and quite honestly, I think you should wait until the meeting on the 7th, then okay. you've, you've gone past the 30 day threshold and nobody can uh, Very good. All object. Right. So Mr. Borkowski, we have a motion to, to table application PB324. Do I have a sufficient second? Mr. McIntyre, thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The, the motion is tabled, I'm sorry. The application is tabled. Um, I thank Amy, thank you. Uh, Peter, Ryan, thank you very much. We'll 
see you folks uh, in a few weeks and everybody else, uh, thank you. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Patty, Mrs. Brill, thank you. All right, thank you everybody. Good evening. Thanks thank everybody. You. Thank you.